All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Lore Lodge official podcast. I am your host, Aiden Mattis. This is Aiden Thornbury. And joining us today from across the pond is Ryan. Ryan, you want to introduce yourself to the people? Yes. That is uh, that. Is, that was my first exposure to you. Was one of your Alexander Simpvids, uh, <laughs> which is just yeah. <laughs> you good? <coughs> apparently not. You're making me check my hydration. <laughs> good lord. Oh my god, they can't hear him apparently. Uh, great. Even though we, he's showing up. Yeah, he's showing up. Uh, How can they not hear you, Ryan? Can you talk? I it's just don't, uh, but the thing is, like, we're, it's not on our side, you know? Uh, is it, let's make sure it's outputting. Yeah, I don't even know. Is that output capture being? Everything we hear, they should hear. Can you, uh, here, remove that, um, Remove that. This guy. Delete it. I hate Streamlabs so much. All yeah, right, right, now go to add. Um, okay, go to audio output capture. Um, add. New source. New source. Um, and go to device, Yeti. Uh, which one's the Yeti? Sorry, it's, uh, wait, hang on. Um, yeah, it's that one, blue USB audio 2.0. Now close it. Do you want to do that, or is it... It's that. Yeah, okay. Okay, close it. Got it. All right, Ryan, can you talk for us again? Okay, we... we how we doing? Uh, it's showing that we can. Now, it's showing for us. Yeah, on my screen, you've got, like, the little green light to say it's recording and sending audio. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, we can, we can hear you through Discord. It's just a matter of... Discord, our Discord yeah. call going into the stream. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, okay. Taylor says it's go. working now. So I guess we should yeah. just do yeah, a new we'll audio just do the intro intro capture yeah, every, every time. time. Like, ugh, oh my god, it says a little loud, but we just fixed that. Um, yep. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lore Lodge official podcast. I'm Aiden Mattis. This is Aiden Thornbury. That's Ryan. Ryan, tell us who you are. Hello, I'm Ryan, otherwise known as uh, the illustrious history daddy, although not the illustrious bit, and um, otherwise known as the guy who simps for Alexander, which is. Of course, a glorious way to be known. Yes, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so obviously you've been you've been doing TikTok for a few months, like yeah. at, at a at a high level, right? Yeah. Yeah. Properly, like I think I really started to blow up about August last year. Mm-hmm. I think that was when I like it started to go from like a couple hundred like a couple hundred people to like out of nowhere I had fifteen thousand and then it's just snowballed from it. I think we're nearly at fifty K now, which is still fun, small but it's a fun experience. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's, yeah. oh yeah. It's small but it's significant, you know, it's it tells yeah. you you're doing something right, you're on the right track. And especially if it if like if it came from you like shot up to fifteen thousand and now it's been yeah. steady. That's how you know you're it's doing been, something right. Yeah, um it's um <laughs> It's, it's, it's like, I, I, I find it goes like, and then like, and then it just shoots up yep. and plateaus, and then shoots up and then plateaus. Or you're like me, where I'm netting about an extra five followers a day now, because I have people unfollowing and people following. I hate TikTok so much. Yeah, that's annoying. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's yeah, like we're not going to show your videos to anybody new, and also we're going to have people unfollow you. Um, but you know, that's, that's the way of the world. But what we have to talk about today is of course the most important aspect of all of this. Um, Alexander the Great and the, the simping for him. What, tell us, tell us why you simp for Alexander. Um, so I don't know if, if you would have ever seen it, the TV show called Horrible Histories. Yes. Based on the books by Terry Derry. Once Um, upon a time. Yeah, it's Terry Derry, isn't it? Long, long ago. Oh yeah. Um, (laughs) <laughs> the, the glorious days. Um, I, there, I, I first saw Alexander, there was a sketch, um, I call it the Skinny Mandria sketch, where Alexander's just listing out all of the cities, and they're pointing out all of the cities that he's conquered and named Alexandria. And um, 
by, by the end of the sketch, he, he, um, his mate's going, well, maybe we could, um, you know, name it something else. And then, like, Alexander hints that he should name it after him. And then he goes, well, if you actually conquered the city, you could name it Skinny Mandria. And then, obviously, <laughs> that I found that hilarious as a young child. Right. Um, so I then went, OK, I'm going to look this up. And the fact that he was just as arrogant mm -hmm. <laughs> and, like, up himself, um, as the show described, I fell immediately in love. I mean, I have a very bad judge of character, but <laughs> I was picked, picked up. Um, so I was immediately like, "This man is amazing," right? Um, and that just led me to an obsession with ancient Greece, um, and uh, to much to my parents' annoyance, because every time they put on Hercules, I would immediately sing Heracles over <laughs> over the top because I was so annoyed at the Disney pronunciation. <laughs> Um, which is also why I overpronounce a lot of um, Eastern European words because my brain's like I have to get this correct and then it overdoes yeah. it and then someone like this is just you've yeah. overdone it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've made a mistake. Yeah, um, yeah it, it always like he is one of those figures though in history that like yeah he was definitely arrogant but did he not earn it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, he definitely earned it. Um, in fact, he did have a humble moment. Do you know the philosopher Diogenes? Yes. Um, yes, I love this story. Um, Tell it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell it right and now. So, <laughs> Alexander obviously heard of Diogenes because Diogenes was famous for just wanting nothing and all he wanted. And in fact, um, the only possession he had was a barrel and a bowl until one day he saw a child scooping water out of like a pond and he went i don't need the bowl threw the bowl away and then just lived in the barrel anyways alexander heard about this and was like oh i have to meet this bloke so he gets taken to georgines and um he, he just sort of stands over georgines and goes hi i'm alexander you've probably heard of me and georgines looks up and goes you're in my son <laughs> alexander completely humbled goes if i were not alexander i'd be georgines and georgines goes well, I'd still be Diogenes. <laughs> and it, it's just like this absolute moment of... And Alexander, to his credit, took it in his stride. He just he found it hilarious and then just walked... He definitely was a bit... Like, you can't have conquered that much and not been a little bit hurt by that. But he, yeah, he, from the story, bit, yeah. he, he, he just walked off. And, um, but yeah, that's, that's probably, other than the Gordian Knot, is my favourite Alexander story. Yeah, and yeah, since, since we're brought up, why don't you tell us about the Gordian Knot? Um, so the Gordian Knot um, was pretty much... I'm, again, it's a very. I, I, I'll give a very brief account because I don't know the intricate details because I always forget the intricate details. But um, long story short, the Gordian knot was the um, was the knot that it was said whoever could untie the knot would conquer all of Asia. Um, however, when shown this, Alexander was never given the specific rule set of, of how of how this works. So he just took out his sword and sliced it in half, which. <laughs> In, by technicality, um, that is not tying. Yeah. Technically, it's, 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 it's untied. I mean, it's, in his defense, he did go on to conquer all of Asia and everything yeah. else. I think my favorite, well, what, my, my favorite Asia, part of all of it with Alexander is that you have a guy who started off basically mm -hmm. with you know, not nothing, but it, it, Macedonia was not a particularly large kingdom even after he became hegemon of all the yeah. Greeks. I mean, for the time he's got, period, he ends was, up controlling uh, Afghanistan. Uh, well, like, the man was playing Crusader Kings in real life. <laughs> like, well, and, and I, I know Bactria, yeah, calling the, the Greco Bactrian kingdom a Afghanistan yeah. is a little bit, a little bit of an exaggeration. But yeah. at the same time, you've got a guy yeah. who like. He he hopped over and like just kinda, I, I, this is a man who why didn't he go into India? Um, well, that was mainly to do with the fact that his army was like we're we're really fed up with the fact we haven't been home. Half of us haven't seen our families. I mean, half of them there was there was a big chunk of them because uh, I I do want I do go on small tangents. So I will try to stem them. Um, that, that he tried to marry off a big chunk of his military command to Persian wives once he mm. conquered Persia, which backfired horrifically because it turns out women who have just been conquered and have all their husbands killed aren't too keen on marrying your men. <laughs> so there is, is something they're not really into. Um, so a lot of his men had also have like Persian families um, that they're low-key want to get back to and make sure 
you know, haven't run away mm -hmm. with like a load of their wealth um, and the rest of the main soldiers. Because you've got to remember at this time period, the baggage trains normally had families at the end. Yeah. Alexander wasn't as big on it because he didn't really like feeding large mm -hmm. armies. Um, so all of these guys were just like, we, we want to turn back. Like, I'm not going to die for any further. Alexander was like, this new land is amazing. I want to conquer all of it. If Alexander had had his way, he would have probably... I don't know if he would have made it for all of India because obviously it's a very different terrain. And the battles he fought there, he did win but not as successfully as he had been. I yeah. don't think, I mean, there's, there's, there's some real fanatics out there who are like, he would have conquered China if he had had the chance, but I don't, yeah. I'm not, I don't think he could have pushed that far. I think his army would have become tired. I think if he had survived further, I, a lot of people disagree with me, and this is a very controversial thing to say, I think he would have pushed west because he would have, because like the early sort of Etruscan Romans mm -hmm. like start they're not nowhere near as powerful as they are, uh, would become but like that sort of prowess he would probably see that as a challenge and the west and the Celts and everything would would be enticing to him so I think if he had lived longer he wouldn't have moved east he would have moved west yeah I definitely looking back at it you know it was the correct decision to not go for mm -hmm. India from a strategic yeah. standpoint uh going for India would have been Napoleon going for Moscow um yeah like it, it just would have gone horribly for him. And at the end of the day, I do, I do wonder, you know, had he actually survived the journey back, had he made it back, first of all, you wouldn't have had the, the issues with the Diadochi um, yet. But I mean, the guy could easily have conquered Carthage. Could easily have gone. I mean, Carthage probably would have been the hardest yeah. because of just where it was regionally. But he could easily have gone back, marched up the Illyrian coastline, and then down into uh, mm. into Etruria, Etruria and. Probably I probably had all of it. I think he probably would have all entered into an awkward alliance with, with Carthage. Because you have to remember, like, Carthage was now probably looking at places like Egypt. Like, Alexander walked into Egypt and was pretty much greeted as a liberator. Mm -hmm. liberator. Um, it was a similar situation um, in Judea, which the, the Seleucids would cause absolute chaos with yeah. later on. Um, but I, I think there would have been a semi, like, semi-alliance. It definitely would have broken down. But... Um, I don't, I don't know if he would have tried to attack Carthage. I think he would have focused more. Because, again, like Carthage is a, is a viable trading partner um, for Egypt. So I think that though, those open plains would have been mm -hmm. far more enticing, um, like in sort of northern Europe, and as you go towards the steppes, probably would have been more enticing to him. But do you not think that eventually... Like, do, I guess my question is, if you look at the history of the Roman Empire... Yeah. It took them from the second founding of Rome in 390 BC. Mm. It took them from 390 all the way through to, I think they conquered uh, Judea in like 68 BC. Yeah. It took them a hundred years to do what Alexander did. Yeah. Do you think Alexander could have done it in his lifetime, what Rome did? I, I don't think he would have taken... Um like Gaul and stuff like that. I, he definitely wouldn't have taken... Um, actually, no, the Germanic tribes hadn't really established themselves that much at that time. So he might have been able to take Northern Europe. Um, I, he probably would have, he would have taken Italy easily, 100%. Mm -hmm. the, the Etruscans and the Romans at that point. And the, the Romans probably would have put up a decent fight. You have to remember, um, looking like the only sources we have are obviously later, and the closest I have is, is Pyrrhus of Epirus, who the Romans said was the closest they ever came to fighting Alexander. And yeah. Pyrrhus, near, if Pyrrhus had had the actual strategic mindset, he and taken right, he made the same mistake Hannibal did. He didn't push on Rome when he had the advantage. Yeah. Um, if Pyrrhus had done that, he would have taken Rome, which says, to me... With Alexander, with a much stronger force and a much better tactical mindset, um, probably would have taken Rome with ease and bite the rest of Italy um, also. But the only point of contention I could see cause would be Spain mm -hmm. um, and maybe Sicily, and that would be where Carthage and Alexander would come uh, come to blows, I think. But I'd, he definitely wouldn't push to, to Britain. Um mm -hmm. Because you have to remember the Romans didn't really want Britain. That was only there to make... I can't remember which emperor emperor actually was that went through Britain. But that was only there to make him look good. Nero wanted to pull out. Nero was really big on... like If Bodhra had won, Nero would have pulled, uh, pulled Rome out. 
Um, so I don't think he would have pushed that far west because it just wouldn't be worth it to him. But he definitely would push just past Italy, I think, and a little bit north, but he wouldn't conquer like up, up north. With with Massalia there, he would at least have a Greek foothold on on the Gallic coast. So I can't. I could see him definitely pushing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it just I, I think he's, I, yeah. he he was so ambitious as a figure. That I, mm. I I wonder not necessarily you know I wonder if he would ever choose to stop versus you know would he be forced to stop? Oh, true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm thinking of it too much. I'm looking at his strategic mind more than I am his ambition. Which yeah, no, I suppose there was quite a few times his ambition overpowered his strategy and exactly. his tactical mind. That I will admit to. Yeah. What do you think the world would would be? Di- how do you think it would be different if he had never succeeded? If he had never died, sorry. If he had never... Because obviously, if he had never succeeded, the world would be different in a much different way. But if he if he hadn't died yeah. in 3... It was 323, right? Uh, hang on. I believe, I believe he died in 323. I believe it was 323. Um, yeah, I believe, but, it, I believe it was 323. If he hadn't, what do you what do you think the world would look like today? Yeah, it was 323. June 323. Um, if... I, it, I, I don't believe there would be much difference, purely because this is going to upset all the Roman fanboys. The Romans took a hell of a lot from the Greece, uh, from, the, from the Greeks. From the Greece. Um, yeah, the Greece. <laughs> um, the Romans did take a hell of a lot from them. They did make it their own, um, as I was um, as I was, as, as I was schooled on by Roma de Omnia. Um, uh, but we would have far deeper... Greek influence um, or a Hel- or Hellenistic influence. In fact, you probably wouldn't see the proper Greek identity because Europe, instead of having like an overall Mediterranean influence and then obviously a Germanic influence, which would receive the Celts, the one thing Alexander was very good was convincing people. Um, you know, like uh, the scene in uh, in Rogue One, which is like, "Congratulations, you're being rescued. Please mm-hmm. do not resist." Right. I, I, I think you would have a, a, Celt- a, a Greco-Celtic culture emerge yeah. um, because he would conquer, but he was much better at assimilating, whereas right. the Romans were much better at making you Roman. Right. The whereas Alexander... Is... Yeah. The, the, whereas Alexander, obviously, because he's doing a speed run, right? He's, mm. he's, he's, you know, he's, he's trying to do a, a, a Minecraft speed run. Um, so he understood that he had to respect cultures well, he's one of the first leaders to have a, a unified currency as well mm. across the empire. Um, so that would be, if he had lived, the main difference would be a deeper connection to ancient Greece, a lack of a modern Greek identity, and a more Hellenic world overall, um, with different subcultures a lot stronger. So you mm. wouldn't just have, um, like, Saxon, Celtic... Um, Scandinavian, like Germanic overall, Slavic. Mm-hmm. I though like you would have like there would be a Greco at the start of right. most of those because it'd be so deeply wedged in. If his son could control it, and we don't really know much about his son because his son didn't get a chance to right. do anything because of Cassandra. I think that that's uh, a uh, a great a great segue too because I. Uh, Alexander's death is a very mysterious. Um, event. Yes. I, I remember yes. growing up, I was taught that he died of malaria. Um, I was always taught he died of uh, alcohol poisoning. You heard alcohol poisoning? Yes. Interesting. Alcohol poisoning. <laughs> Holes in the stomach caused by the alcohol. In fact, I've had two versions of that where he died of alcohol poisoning and died because someone poisoned the alcohol. <laughs> Jeez. They were... <laughs> this is brutal. Yeah. Um, so, oh, but... Uh, hint, hint. So as for, I mean, obviously his death is the the topic of a lot of, of mystery. He clearly died from some sort of illness, whether that was yeah. alcohol poisoning or malaria. Or and I'm not I'm not hardline on this. I don't really know what happened. I don't think any, but we probably never will know what happened unless we can find his body. But we mm. can't find his body, and that I think is fascinating because obviously his body was being transported to Alexandria when it was lost. I have where did it go? I have. I have theories. Um, there's All a, there's that's why you're here. I want to hear your theories. There, there, is a, there is a particular, there is a particular saint um, 
who, again, I said earlier, I, I forget names, like nobody's business, but there's a saint buried in Venice. I think it might be St. Mark's tomb in Venice? I don't, there's a particular saint's tomb in Venice. However, when they was doing, like, um, a little bit of archaeology, uh, they discovered some, like, Hellenistic artwork on the walls, and there was, like, a couple of shields. And, obviously, the internet went, what if what if it's Alexander's tomb? And, mm-hmm. like, if you look it up... I, I'm going to have to do that up as I speak. Um, if you look it up, the imagery is very clearly of a certain conquest. Mm-hmm. And that is why... I, don't, I can't share the images with you, can I? You can tell me what it is, and I can look it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's why I'm trying to so I can describe it, because I need to be able to describe it. Um, so... There it is. So, basically, it's like... The first image is like you can see the phalanx wheel and you can see the actual phalanx being in place. So it's clearly Hellenistic marble and clearly Ellen, um, Hellenistic um, artwork. It might not be some marks. Um, it might be another. No, it is marks too. Neither here nor there. Um, and so obviously the main current theory is that Alexander was moved to Venice or his tomb was reused. Um, mm-hmm. For St. Mark, because I believe St. Mark was himself moved from Alexandria. I'm not 100% sure, but the running right. theory, and it's the one I personally believe, is that Alexander's body is buried within St. Mark's tomb. Um, yeah. I don't know why they would want to hide him, but obviously he's, he's, he's a, a, a technically a pagan symbol, so I mm-hmm. don't know, but then you're getting into mumblennial conspiracies, and I don't want to yeah. go down that road. <laughs> I mean, it's just—it's a fascinating idea. Like, I'm trying to find the exact, uh, you know, picture so I can take a look. But, but Saint Mark's was built. That's like that's that's medieval. Yeah, I know. the The idea is that he was moved um, into Saint Mark's Cathedral. That's the 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 running the theory. Obviously, it's not. So it would yeah. that would require that somebody took his body when it was being yeah. transported, kept it somewhere secret for hundreds, well, a thousand years, and then... That's the... That, I mean, I will admit, defi- definitely um, some fall-downs in the theory. No, I'm not um, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just like, I'm trying to think, like, who... What would be the utility of keeping his body? Like, who... Because it, it's, um... I mean, someone that strong... Um, here we go. There's the... There's the from the the independent I'll, I'll I'll put the link in Discord. And that's got the, the rough story. This won't mess up if I send it over to Discord, will it? it won't mess up the sound, will it? <laughs> Don't certainly won't mess up the sound. Alright, okay. this is this is interesting because I, I found uh some of the artwork from the tomb and that is definitely a, a Regina Sun. Yeah. Like that's yeah. not that's not questionable. They're saying that's the Greaves, that's the Zistan, and that's the shield. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's suspicious, isn't it? Yeah, that's... That is interesting. So that would be... So strange. And you gotta, like, oh. where where would it have been prior to that, you know? Like... There, there's a couple of theories. There's a couple of, like, obviously there are a couple of gaps that I'm, I'm not 100% on. I... I, I I think that it would be because it's a power symbol, because mm-hmm. um, it, it's it's like if you own Alexander's body, if you have that in your possession, mm-hmm. people are going to take you seriously. Because if you, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's just that link, it's that subconscious link to... Um, well, it was very I, common so throughout I, Christianity in Europe as well, that having the body of a saint I, was very important. Uh, I was going to say, if, if I took, like, like uh, Ulius is... I'm using the Latin pronunciation because I'm pompous. Um, <laughs> if I was to take that and say, like, and I went to Italy and I was, like, trying to revive the Roman Empire, it's going to take a subconscious link because I'm like, look, I have Julius Kaiser's body. Take me seriously. And if right. I just turned up and, like, was like, sup, I'm going to reform Rome. Even though but the both the both times are probably going to look at me like, you okay? Uh, right. But they're going to take me a bit more like seriously and go, oh no, he does mean business because he's gone and found Julius Kaiser, but whose body is also missing. We just don't have. I did not body. know that. I didn't know that we didn't have his body. Nope. If you look it up, um, he was rumored to be 
in this particular object which the Pope broke open and they couldn't find it. He is allegedly buried in a couple of different locations. It's like Robin Hood, where Robin Hood's allegedly buried in a couple of different <laughs> locations. We don't effectively know where his body is. Right, of course. So It's, it's weird. There's a lot of... Like, we don't know where um, Chingus Khan's body is. We're going properly into conspiracies. We don't know where all these really, really important figures of history are. You gotta wonder if that's like... If, if that was deliberate. If these people who knew that they were going to be extremely famous... You know, if you're if yes. you're Julius Caesar, you know that you're that you've cemented your place in history. You got to wonder yes. if they had their final wishes, like you know, if they had told friends, colleagues, you know, when I die, yeah. tell people I'm being buried here, but put my real body here, mm. so that they wouldn't be defiled after death. Like, yeah, especially with the way that uh, pagan societies viewed that, mm-hmm. and how your burial circumstances often could have an effect on your. Um, you know, the state of your body at at burial could have an effect on yeah. your position in the afterlife. Like I could totally see them, you know, pulling a pulling a bait and switch. You know, having this immaculate sarcophagus being put into some giant uh, mausoleum somewhere, and then the actual body is buried under a farmhouse. Yeah, more than likely. I mean, if it, to, to to really reinforce that, Chinggis um, Chinggis Khan, we know for a fact did have his like body. So like everyone that was at his funeral was then killed, and then. His body was buried by like some random guy who, when he came back, um, he, um, his they son killed him like, too. One of his sons, yeah, was like, "You done it," and he was like, "Brilliant." And then the ancient Egyptians, after they realised everyone was stealing their stuff from um, their ty- uh, from the pyramids, that was when they was like, "Okay, here's the amazing stuff. I'm actually buried under a pile of dirt, just yeah. unmarked over here." But there is maps to know where it is because they needed to have it like checked yeah. and stuff. Um, because obviously the, the the way I'm not 100 percent on the Egyptian religion system, but you go with me. It's confusing. Um, yes, it's very I, confusing. I used to have a much better understanding of it as a child, ironically, because mm. um, I read a lot of Egyptian mythology, and then I haven't since. Um, Fair. I've been getting a little bit more into it as I have been researching early Judaism because uh, early Judaism has a lot in common with Sumerian, Canaanite, and mm. Egyptian religion. Uh, yes. Which, again, people go on to be like, oh, well, that proves that Judaism is a, you know, ripoff of so-and-so. And I'm like, no, nah, we don't know who was first here, actually. Like, all yeah. of these all of these are pre, mm-hmm. pre-written pre religions. Like, <laughs> pre-write, pre, pre-writing religions. So we don't know which came first. Um, but I do want to use that, uh, the, the topic of Alexander's death to talk about one of the other big, important... Uh, events of that time period, which is the fact that after he died, his empire immediately fell apart. Um, yes. So I gotta ask you the question. Uh, who, who's your favorite of the Diadochi? Antigonus. Antigonus? Antigonus, 100%. Oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tell me why. I don't necessarily purely, disagree, but you gotta tell me why. <laughs> purely because he came the closest um, to... Uh, t- to reclaiming the entire empire mm-hmm. and this is where my Ptolemy hate comes in because it was <laughs> a little bit of like Ptolemy was really shifting alliances not so much he was in the battle so much, I think you actually Antigonus's last battle was up against Lysimachus wasn't it? I might be thinking of it I, I might be so. mixing up names yeah I might be mixing up names yeah. um, for, for but, those um, who aren't familiar let's uh let's let's lay out who these people were um the the Diadochi were Alexander's closest companions, his generals, the the top men mm-hmm. in his army. Uh, that included Lysimachus, who ended up being king of Thrace, um, yeah. Seleucus, who ended up being king of, for lack of a better term, um, Asia, and so basically every uh, southern Anatolia through um, the Mesopotamian region as well as the Levant, and then Ptolemy took Egypt. And Antigonus had Macedon. Uh, is that all of them? Uh, it was four. I don't think Antigonus actually originally had Macedon. It was Cassander that took Macedon. Was it Cassander? Yes, Cassander, because Cassander allegedly killed um, his, his um, Alexander's son, and if depending on what story you believe, allegedly killed Alexander. Yeah, I definitely Alexander. knew about him killing Alexander's son. I didn't know that. Uh, didn't know about the Alexander connection. Allegedly, I will allegedly. point. Allegedly. allegedly, because it's not it's not a um a, a do the ancient Asians. Allegedly, 
Mm. <laughs> we need to get a, uh, a button that pulls up a graphic of an ostrich yes. every time somebody says allegedly on the show. Yes. Um, that, is a, that is something you will only get if you watch American and Canadian television. But <laughs> Yes. And once we get a stream deck, I think we can actually do that. I have a stream deck on our Amazon wish list. If anybody wants to buy a stuff off of our Amazon wish list, it's in the... Uh, the AidenMattis.card.co, just saying. Um, we need more sound panels. We do need more sound panels. Anyway, moving on. Moving swiftly along. Um, so, uh, you, you got to tell me, why why Antigonus? Is it his claim? Is it because he was the closest? Or, like... It's, it's, purely, it's purely because he was the closest, and he also taught Pyrrhus of Epirus, who I also have a very soft spot for. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I... I uh, Pyrrhus Vepirus actually gets me more views than Alexander does sometimes because even more nations in the Balkans claim him. <laughs> so even Which none of them it. should. <laughs> exactly. Um, it be, uh, in fact, in my Pyrrhus Vepirus uh, video, I was genuinely shocked on YouTube when I didn't get anyone because I openly called him the last Greek warrior king. Um, which I thought it's was, accurate. Which is true. That's what kings and generals call him, and mm. they have some pretty good sources. Um, so that's my like my biggest reason. Even though um, Antigonus uh, and his son, which was Demetri yeah, Demetrius, Demetrius. Uh, Demetrius would end up butting heads with Pyrrhus. Um, mm -hmm. That that early that like we wouldn't have Pyrrhus of Epirus if we didn't have Antigonus yeah. first. In fact, Antigonus the second, um, which is another reason why Antigonus, because again it all leads in to this look like the final con confrontation of Pyrrhus. Antigonus II wept when Pyrrhus Vepirus died because he mm. was reminded of how amazingly close Antigonus got to reclaiming the empire and actually uniting it, mm -hmm. and then was just pushed down by other lesser generals. And because Pyrrhus had been killed by some lowly, like you know, the story of Pyrrhus dying, he was um, he was fighting a, a he was a, struck a, in the head with a roof shingle, right? Yes, uh, in the chest. Uh, he, so chest. he was he was struck down from his horse. Um, in the chest by it. He was fighting a, like, a random towns, townsman because mm -hmm. he'd charged into this town. The mother threw the shingle down, it hit him in the chest, he fell to the floor, and while he was on the floor, he was beheaded. And Antigonus mm -hmm. II saw this as horrific. Like, bearing in mind, this was like, ancient Greece was honour above, like, even mm -hmm. the medieval period would look at ancient Greece and be like, oh wow, they're into honour. Like, mm -hmm. honour bound stuff. And right. like, the fact he'd done that, when Antigonus II's son came towards him with Pyrrhus's head, Antigonus II was like, that's that that like that's disgusting. You know that happens to our family. Like you shouldn't mm -hmm. have more respect for your enemy. Mm -hmm. Like that like we're going to kill him, yes, but mm -hmm. do it respectfully. Which right. is a weird concept to us in the modern day. Yeah. But I think in a weird like it's it's oddly well, we, I think in the modern day when we when, when we fight people, like we've conditioned ourselves societally that if the that the person we're fighting is is evil. It's yes, we've right. gotten rid of in a in a very odd way, we've gotten rid of the concept of like that war doesn't have to be because your enemy is evil. It could just be yeah. because there's resources that you both want, and there's no good way to determine who gets yeah. them other than to fight for it. That's not to make um, a comment on a current war yeah. that's going on yeah. right now. That was a general <laughs> statement. <laughs> but Aiden, how could you possibly kill someone for something that seems so civil? I don't know. Apparently with a roof shingle. <laughs> it's, it's, the idea... <laughs> it's, the, it's the idea of honor. It's the idea of honor, um, which... Um, Right up until um, uh, World War One was mm -hmm. really instilled in every single person because it, it's honor for your country, it's honor for your your king, your queen, your emperor, mm -hmm. your, like your your uh, for your family. If you if you don't go and fight, you're not fighting for your family, for your country. You should be proud, and that obviously kind of spiraled in the mid 20th century, which was what. Um, but that that honor bound is why mm -hmm. we were we were ready to go into the Horrors War, and when people came back. Um, you have stories of people going absolutely crazy still, even from like ancient Greece and that. You can find stories of what is clearly right. PTSD. Um, but because of that honor-bound sense, like, and obviously a lack of understanding in medicine, Hippocrates, like, if you look at some of his notes, he understood mental health way better than we would for thousands of years after him. Mm -hmm. um, but that honor-bound sense meant it just wasn't talked about, and you were going to fight for the gods. Like, that, right. that and so... As once that was lost, I think that is why now instead of heroic stories of, of the Argonauts setting off mm -hmm. on quests or um, of, of 
of, of people leading charges, even in the Falklands, I suppose, with like mm. last sort of drabs and like the, the heroic stories of war. Mm. You have now, in, in like in the modern age, in the 21st century, you have stories like Franz Dicker and Charlie Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the stories like the Battle of the Bulge, and you, the, like even for its horrific inaccuracies, Saving Private Ryan and, yeah. and Fury and stuff like that. Because now we now we've come as a civilization to go: Is it worth it? Is the, mm -hmm. the nation state? Is is our like religious belief? Is our is our government worth fighting for? And I think the only thing most people would say is for family, and that's why yeah. in World War Two. They, everyone switched up for you're not fighting for your country you're fighting to defend your family mm -hmm. they're, they're gonna the nazis are gonna come for you exactly um, and that's why sorry i went on a bit of a tangent there about honor, no but, no you're um, fine yeah. we love <laughs> the tangents um, I, I i am very good at that <laughs> <laughs> so are we <laughs> we're, we're, yeah we're, we're all in good company because we are all three people who could go on tangents for far too long so <laughs> have no worry the entire point of this show is a tangent so yeah. you're so I, go. I do want to know because uh, obviously I, I i have my my alexander pretty well and uh ryan is over here having wet dreams about him so um <laughs> What what do you, do you have questions about any of this this time period? Is there anything you've heard that you're that you're curious about? Honestly, a lot of it's just learning. Like you know, <laughs> I, I I had a general base understanding of Alexander the Great, as in he was a guy who existed who was really good at being a leader. Uh, the, my my scholarly education really did not focus on Alexander the Great. Uh, none of my history classes really focused on anything prior to like twelve hundred. So a lot of the things that I've you know, been hearing now and just generally being friends with him is stuff that I've never encountered before. So it's just kind of interesting. No general questions. I mean, with some of the video that gave us gave me some information, honestly, I'm just finding this entertaining and interesting to listen to. Uh, if I think of questions, I will ask. Okay, absolutely. But care. yeah, as of and, right now. And uh, to take a moment to, to talk about questions, since at a certain point tonight, I don't know what time it is. Um, it's 7.45. Yeah, in about close. 15 minutes, we will be getting into the question and answer section, which, of course, the standard practice is that mm. we... We'll answer Super Chats first, and we will get as many questions that are not Super Chats as we can. The show is at a hard limit of 8.30 tonight, because in the Discord, we are doing movie night at 9 p.m., so, uh, you know, that is something else you should know. You can go to discord.gg slash the lore lodge to join that. What's the movie again? I believe it's Monty Python and the Holy Grail, but I could be wrong. Ooh, uh, but I just wanted to slip that in there <laughs> while we have a quick second, too. And I do want to hop on to what you just said, because... Um, there just is, like, this entire period of history from, uh, like, the death of Alexander in 323 up really through kind of the the, fir the Macedonian Wars, in my opinion. Um, I guess the Punic Wars also. But I, I guess up until the Punic Wars, that just doesn't get talked about in school. It's like, Alexander conquered mm. the world. And then a hundred years later, <laughs> like, <laughs> nothing happened for a hundred yeah. years and then Rome. Yeah. And that's just, like... It's so fascinating to me because the wars of the Diadochi are so interesting as a concept. Like, mm -hmm. the fact that the Seleucids were constantly fighting the Ptolemies and, you know, ne nobody was getting anywhere. Um, and then the the Greco the, the non-successor Greek states that emerged out of this, Epirus, uh, the, um, the, the, uh, the remainder of the cities of the Hellenic League, and then you've got Syracuse yeah. off doing its own thing and Massalia doing its own thing. And um, over in the Black Sea, you've got uh, the the Archibosporus. Um, like, just all of this this period of history where there's all these things there that just don't get brought up in school. Here's how little Massalia is, is spoken about, especially in the UK. I didn't know Massalia was a thing until I was learning about the early Celtic cultures um, two weeks ago. <laughs> I, I genuinely didn't know about Massalia. Did you watch our video on early Celtic culture? Um, no, I have not. I'm ashamed. You should watch our video in early. What did, what, what did we just record before this? Uh, just before this, we recorded a video on. Um, oh yeah, we recorded. That wasn't early, but we recorded a <laughs> video on the uh, the or the beginning of the uh, English conquest of Ireland. Um, so there's a there's a fun little fact that because I I do if we get time I do want to talk a little bit about about folklore if we get a chance because there is the fun little time Let's do it. I do have a, a little bit of Irish Irish heritage Let's and do it. um obviously my favourite story is of King Arthur hmm. and my middle name is Arthur and my first name mm -hmm. is obviously Ryan 
which means Little King. So I love, as my favourite tip, is I'm technically Little King Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> love That's awesome. It my favorite tidbit but um yeah no if you ever if you want if you want to go into ghost lines really i can talk about yeah let's go let's talk about it yeah now's the football. time we got 15 minutes before uh question time so let's kick it um let's let's start off with a particular uh so i think i'll, I'll just talk about the one um, i said on the chat last night actually um of when i when i was um I think I was about six or seven. Um, me and my brother used to have have bunk beds you remember bunk beds when that was a yeah, thing that of course, parents yeah. would choose <laughs> um so i woke up and i remember seeing like it looked like a large set of curtains oh that's my phone should have been apologies um and it looked like there was a load of curtains and i was like why is there curtains in the middle of it and then i sort of like woke up a bit more and i looked up and i can just remember like getting to the point where there should have been a face but like wasn't any indications of a face but i knew where it was looking and it was like looking at my brother in the bunk above me and i was like huh did the kid thing, threw the covers over, and like slowly peeled them back, and then it was like looking, and then I watched it move down and like look at me again, no face, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, nope, did the kid thing, and then I pulled covers back one last time, and it was still there, and for some reason, right, very much I was terrified. For some reason, as a child, I just went, well, if I put the cover over my head and go back to sleep, it might go. And that was what I did. And, like, weird reaction. If it was now, I probably, you know, would be trying to, you know, punch it, like, doing right. something. But, like, that was the weird kid reaction. Um, and the other um, the other story going into it more often. So um, I used to do loads of paranormal stakeouts, and none mm-hmm. of them had any effect, apart from this one place at a park, which I won't name because I will end up doxing myself, um, <laughs> where we was on the stakeout, and me and my mate had just gone just gone for a whiz outside this particular hut that was meant to be haunted but it was the best place to go without anyone you know like because british police like to hover around and catch you for menial stuff right um so we walk we walk back out and coming out of this bush we see a dog and we're like oh wow it's like but it's a really jet white dog it looks like if you ever seen the dark crystal the big beasts where they like come out and they've got the big wings sort of thing look like that and then in one fluid motion just goes like that in like to on all twos and then looks like someone in a baseball cap mm-hmm. and shoes and just carries on running one fluid motion um and that obviously freaks out at the same time we did also see um w- what we called the woman in white we saw a random woman in a hut and that uh, freaks out we never went there again and then my, i think my last story of the hundreds that i could tell but i don't want to take two hours to do it um i was i was visiting uh, this this like, uh, like semi old it was like a Georgian house and um, I, all I can clearly distinctly remember we walked into this one room and my my family walked ahead of me and they went on this massive rug and I can just clearly hear like from the right ear someone screaming get off the rug um, and I was like huh but no one else heard it and I thought I, I, I went to my dad I was like the man the man told us to get off the rug but I was like who I looked up this painting right don't know why but my brain was like him and my dad was like yeah nah. mm-hmm. we went around the whole house towards the end my, we go to my dad goes go and tell the lady at the front desk your story my dad thought that she was gonna like put it down and like mm-hmm. you know say oh yeah no we, we yeah no it's just you know um but she just turned around she pulls out a book of all the people who have been said they've either seen this one particular <laughs> book or, or like like heard him say stuff to them my dad just went oh so that was the scariest one apart from i've had several night terrors that sort of bled over to real the real world but they're a bit too creepy um but uh yeah no that's my my free standout ones my free standout ones that and the time i saw black shark which was when i was again well it was in army cadets and i saw like this massive dog except he was more brown in color and you're like just sprint across and um, that was the closest, like, I, I, like, looked up, and then I was like, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's Black Shark, that's the closest thing. I also saw it, like, had used to have a shadow that watched me while I slept. Mm-hmm. And then oh, that's all of what I've been... <laughs> We've all I, seen I, the shadow, I, I, man. Oh, yeah, no, we've, all, we've all had one of those. Um, but then after, he was soon replaced by um, what I've been told was a brownie, um, and it was, like, this little creature with, like, massive long ears, and it was, mm-hmm. like, sort of leathery, and it had, like, brown skin, like a snout. 
Um, and then the last thing I saw was like a, a, a large, tall, blurry but brown figure, which I have been told was a fae. Um, mm -hmm. um, again, I'm not I, I'm not saying this is all real. It's just stuff I've yeah, seen. It's stuff you've experienced. Really yeah. yeah. Um, and then I saw it walk out of one tree and into another tree and then disappear. Um, and that was when I was very young. So that's... It sounds like a dream. Yeah, I have... Mm. I do, I do, I've been, yeah, I, I, I do, I do have a photo that I tell people is of a fae, and if I can find it, I will send it to you. I would love um, to see it. But it, it's like, because I haven't been able to, because it's, it's, it's like a clear mark, and you can see, like, legs, and it's like, it's just a black shape mm. on the screen. But, like, you can clearly see wings, a head, and, like, two, like, legs, and it, it, because it was a photo I took of a Crusader Kings 2 game. Mm -hmm. Um... And in the corner, like reflection, I was like, "That's not a mark on the phone. That's not from the computer." Um, I do have it somewhere on my. I do have it somewhere on my my PC. So we'll have a look if I can find it. I, I should have thought about bringing it on today, but um, fine. Yeah. I I, 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 wanna, I, I, wanna, I do have a question about Black Shuck though. Um, yes. Because the uh, so here here in so I was doing I actually did research on that for our Hellhounds video today. There we go. Um, but I, uh, it seems that it is. A, a bad thing 100% of the time to see, like that it is a, yes. an omen of something, some tragedy or even death. Um, the Welsh one is a little bit uh, more angry, the Gwilchi, which yeah. just immediately rips you to shreds. In Connecticut, uh, which is about the most English place outside of England, um, there is a, a black dog of the Hanging Hills, uh, who apparently, according to Connecticut folklore, if you see him once, it is for joy, something good is going to happen to you. If you see him twice, it is uh, for sorrow, so something bad's going to happen to you. And if you see him a third time, you're going to die. So does Black that, Shuck, where you're from, have any of the same... Black Shuck normally is like... It's, it's a million different... The normal one is... Um, it's It's... Quite a bit like the I'm gonna mispronounce that, and I'm sorry to anyone from Scotland. The the Karenek, Karenek, okay. okay. um, which is a bit like a banshee. Like if you see her, someone in the family was um, going to die, and, and most famously she was heard wailing or seen um, the night before, or the night before, and the night of the Glencoe massacre, mm -hmm. um, which I won't go into because it will take me way too long to explain. Um, <laughs> Can you give us the cliff notes since most of our viewers are American? Um. So the Glencoe Massacre, basically, um, I think it was just after James was deposed, um, the Clan Macdonalds didn't swear fealty to William, I think it was William of Orange, yeah, it was William of Orange, um, didn't swear fealty to, uh, to William in time, even though there was a bit of tomfoolery, they did delay it because the, the, the Macdonalds were, very, were a very stubborn Highland clan, um, and then they were made an example of by some other, um, uh, by some other Scottish um, lords who had sort of like really like closed in and were like yes we're the popular kids now mm -hmm. um, and so they sent in a load of guys who were then um, but this is why anyone who un understands like the, the the when you have when you're a guest in someone else's house how bad this is all of the soldiers slept in the mcdonald clan's houses um, then in the middle of the night woke up and then um in the the most polite terms i can uh, removed the throats of ah. opened up the throats of many of the um, men, women and children, set fire to the homes uh, many women then died freezing in the moors uh, I know this isn't really black shark but it's, it's, I suppose it's related um, and uh, yeah it was it's one of it's still regarded um, as one of the most horrific events in Scottish history and which is saying Scottish, something oh yeah the Scottish people that were, were that, that were involved in organising it are considered absolute traitors, um, and uh, in fact, um, I know obviously he's got some um, controversial, but um, Count Dankula does a very good video on it, and um, he explains why it's still there's a lot of animosity um, towards the English. In fact, I actually used to know um, some of the descendants, um, and really? that that story still reverberates with them. Understandably, it's literally because it's it's horrific, but but the the main like the legend is that the the crown egg and again I do apologize if I'm not very good at pronouncing Gaelic um the uh, like she was seen at least at least on one of the, either the night before or the night of mm -hmm. or both and so that's uh that's the sort of the 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 big link to black shuck um 
is because he was seen in a similar light. Mm -hmm. So he was seen like a banshee um, where it was an omen of death in the family. And then in some stories, it's if you see him, it's you. Mm -hmm. um, and then in some stories, it's just bad luck, family. bad omen, yeah. like bad, bad harvest, bad anything. In fact, <clears throat> in Sax when Saxon and, and then later Norman and English folklore sort of like merges, it's almost always harvests. We, we, mm. <laughs> we were obsessed, like the Saxons and the English were obsessed with bad harvests, if you mm -hmm. see it's bad harvests. Um, the interesting side with the rhyme he was doing, that's crows. In our folklore, it's if you see a crow, it's um, the amount of crows you see. So if you see one crow, it's one for joy, two for sorrow, three, uh, three for three for a girl, four for a boy. And like mm. that goes on, so it's the number of crows you see, which is interesting. I've never heard that rhyme associated with black shark. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. Connecticut there. Hmm. They, they get, uh, that's probably if it's, um, they, they've probably just sort of gone, well, I remember this vaguely. So probably. That's mush. <laughs> Connecticut does have a good amount of, like, pretty intense ghost stories, but in terms of folklore, they're kind of lame. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's, that was the one thing I wanted to ask before we go to, uh, to questions is, like, you know, in the U.S., uh, you, you definitely hear a lot of, like, ghost stories growing up. We're very into into folklore and um, mm -hmm. and telling ghost stories around the campfire. and But that, that's the thing is it's mostly ghost stories and urban legends. Um, you know, what, what was it like growing up in, in England as far as uh, ghost tales and monsters and things? Is that something that people have any solid belief in over there, or do you at least tell stories um, to one another? We, we tell, we tell um, ghost stories... Um, but they tend to be more attached to like Victoria. Like if you're like um, York is the the most haunted town or mm -hmm. most haunted city in the UK, um, and that will be where a lot of ghost stories come from. So you have like obviously that that's one of the few places in the world you actually get Roman ghosts. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, there's a place in the, in Scotland where you actually there's there's like a pre-Celtic ritual ghost who's meant to appear, mm -hmm. but he appears less and less every year, which is very interesting. It's the mm -hmm. only um, Neolithic ghost I've ever heard interesting. of. Interesting. Um, Mm -hmm. it, most of the time um, here, it was for, for me growing up because I was homeschooled, so I have a very different um, I, I have a very different like sort of experience of youth than I do my, most school kids. Right. I, I learned about Bloody Mary very late, but my original idea of Bloody Mary was the Queen. Yeah. Um, like <clears throat> the idea was that she would come and get you, and then that sort of evolved into the the mirror one, which was sort mm -hmm. of came back from America. Um, <clears throat> For me, it was just regular ghosts like living in the attic. Um, there was never really a, a set theme, and if it was, it was normally something like um, black shark, like don't go out or don't don't go into the, the woods too late. The the the, the 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 I hate to use this word; it's going to upset a lot of people. That the fairies will get you because mm -hmm. that was the, the the awful version of the English, which I when whenever I've spoken to um, a Gaelic speaker, they they get very upset if I use the word fairy, so I tend to say fae. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's no, it's it's, Go on. Go on. it's, a, it's an interesting term with a lot of mm. history, but it's and this is what we're going to be talking about next week when we're having Piper on, because um, she's her masters is in folklore, so we're mm. going to be talking about the Fae. Uh, the the term is so yeah. broad. It's so broad. Yes. Oh yes. Yes. And, and you you've got like and you got. 17, 18, 19 year old girls on TikTok who are talking about, you know, I'm a witch and the Fae. And, so, and I'm like, you have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes me incredibly angry. Because I, I know a fair bit. I, ironically, oh, unsurprisingly, I know quite a lot about Greek folklore. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, Wonder why. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, to be fair, also a lot of Slavic um, folklore. I like like stuff like the Leshy, the Domovoy. Mm -hmm. um, which I based a lot of my, which I'm right, the second um, script I'm writing, um, the, a lot of that's based more on Slavic and Greek folklore. Um, but in British folklore or in English, um, in English folklore, you have stuff like I think I think there is a Welsh and Scottish equivalent. I'm not sure about Irish, but um, hmm. the the red cat. Yeah, that, uh, I don't know why. The, I there's a Cornish, the Tommy Knocker, um, is the very Tommy, similar, the but the Tommy Knocker's the underground. Tommy Yes, the Tommy Knocker I love because it's it has completely different meanings. Where you like, there is a Scottish version of the Tommy Knocker, and there is an American. I know there is an American version of the Tommy Knocker, but uh, uh, no, no, the Irish version is the most interesting because the Irish 
version is that I may be mixing this up again. Apologise to anyone if I mix them up. The Irish version is they help you and they're knocking to like go get out because this mine's about yeah. to collapse. And then the Scottish version is um, it, we want to knock it down because we find it hilarious. Um, yeah. Which to me I think is the more realistic version because when you look at uh, I mean obviously Pipe for one like know more about it, but um, the Fae almost always have one thing and that is we want to mess with humans. Yeah. This is like like how can we mess with humans today? Mm-hmm. Um, which is again yeah. why I like the red cat because it just goes along after a battle and goes dip. I like you've just decorated my cat. Thank yep. you for dying. Yeah, we did when we did our video on goblins last. Uh, it was probably December. Um, that was one of the ones we came across was the red caps that are just like these murderous goblins that live out in the woods. Like, <laughs> um, and I did I did just find the the wording for it. So I. Uh, the uh, in Welsh the the fey are itilwith uh, teg, and it means uh, the same thing as it does in in Irish the fair folk, uh, yeah. and um, th- it's uh, they come in five varieties which are elion, um, eh, that's not right, Ech, echlion, echlion? Uh, that's a hard word. That, there's four. This word is e l l y l l o n. I <laughs> Wales, uh, the kabbalai, the bubacha. Uh, the bu- Bubachod, the Gurageth Gure- 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 Anun, and the Gwithyun. God, it is hard to pronounce that language. I do, um, I, uh, I do have one question for you, because I was curious about this. Um, in the UK, we're taught hobgoblins, like, first originated in World War II, and they specifically, on air raids would take out the engines of British fighter pilots and British bomber crews. Is it? Do you have a similar thing in the US, or is it...? <laughs> That's not what hobgoblins are to us. <laughs> um, our <laughs> our, our <laughs> hobgoblins got over here in the 1800s. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, so at least to my understanding, the, uh, the American version of the hobgoblin comes out of the, uh, the English and Scottish hobgoblins of brownies. Um, yeah. And... In ours, it's it's not that they will. Uh, they're not necessarily mischievous in a negative way. It's more that they'll like take a block of cheese and move it, like, um, which could just be an example, uh, an explanation for people mis- misplacing things. But um, no, the the deal here with hob they're almost like akin to gremlins. Um, like there's a set of rules like respect your hobgoblin and it it'll leave you gifts. I uh, don't respect your hobgoblin or be mean to it and it'll like you know cut your brake lines. Um, so that's kind of how they are for us. They can be either good or bad. I suppose that's kind of simple because obviously the brownie is uh, uh, the brownie is obviously the, the direct version of that, as you say. But mm-hmm. the the hobgoblin, like the fight of the the pilot stories that I read, were always like they were leaving offerings to the hobgoblin so that they mm-hmm. wouldn't like chew through the cables and burn down the plane. Um, and it's they're, so they're funny. Also, the, 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 in Slavic folklore, you have the domovoi. And I love the Domovoy. There is also a female counterpart of the Domovoy who is, tends to be the more evil one. But the Domovoy, from what I, I might be mixing them up again, um, but the Domovoy, like, as long as you feed it and like you're kind to it and say nice things and like you say thank you for cleaning the house, it just cleans the house. However, if you're if you're if you're if you're a um, if you're a non nice person, I cleaned it up because I didn't want YouTube to censor you. Right. If I swear, um, if you're a non nice person, um, the Domovoy just causes out absolute havoc. It's the same with right. Leshy, but that's more wooden stuff. In fact. There was a there was a story I read of a woman who lost her mobile phone, but she was a practicing like um, witch. So she left offerings for the less. She did a ritual, went back and was like, basically, if you find my phone, can you like leave it at the, the edge of the forest? Um, went back to uh, like sleep, woke up next morning, phone was on like on, on a stump, like yeah. left for her on, her, on a stump, oh. and like I heard it like I, I again I'm not saying it's hundred percent. True, but I, I low key believe that because it's the stump detail. Mm-hmm. If it was like, oh yeah, the phone left me at the edge of the forest, it's the weird detail of it was yep. left on a tree stump, like it was like an agreed place to put it. And I low key, like, that makes it, I know it's very unbelievable because you'd think the less you would have a bit, put up a bit more of a fight with deforestation. But <laughs> it's just that little, little Love bit. That detail. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, we're going to hop into uh, Super Chats in a second, um, but. One thing that I just have to say on the subject, because we're talking about losing things and then making a deal to find them. You know how I lost my sunglasses a year ago? 
Do you remember this? I was complaining yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, when I lost them, I looked everywhere. I, mm-hmm. I, it was I, I, and, and here's here's the thing. I left them at my parents' place. Mm-hmm. I left them at my parents' place on a table in the living room, and they disappeared. When I came back from them, they weren't there. Mm-hmm. I searched everywhere for them. My car, Christian's car, my mom's car, Ainsley's car. I, my room, Ainsley's room, like, I searched everywhere. Nobody in my family could find these sunglasses. Uh, I And I even, like, tore apart every bit of my car, my glove box, my console, mm-hmm. my back seat, ev- looked everywhere. I got home from work on Friday evening, um, getting ready to drive down to Philly for a concert, and I reach into my, uh, my console. I can't remember what I was looking for, but I reach in there, stick my hand down, Sunglasses. I had checked that spot numerous times. Yeah. And a a couple days earlier, I remember saying to myself out loud, man, I wish I had my sunglasses. Like while I was in the car. Yeah. So I was driving and I'd take a turn that takes me straight west and the sun's like right here Mm. when I get out of work. And I was just like, man, I wish I had my sunglasses. Not not even a week later. And, And I'm like, I know those weren't there. I know for a fact they were not there that's why but that said it is time to transition over to the q a section um y'all have been very quiet so i hope you have built up some questions i know this has been a bit outside of our usual topic of discussion but uh, i hope people have questions i would love to love to get stuff especially if it's stuff that uh that ryan can answer um you know about daddy alexander well so far <laughs> the only oh boy uh, there's one there we go well, we got a uh, super chat from, uh, the first one was from Douglas Ives for $2, and there's nothing there. Well, thank you, Douglas. So thank you, Douglas. Uh, and then the next one is from Hannah Farmer for a $20. Thank you very much. It says, uh, what are your favorite Diogenes stories aside from the one told? You got I guess one? it's for um, both. Checking, because I, I, I have a story, but I think <laughs> it's not Diogenes. No, it's Diogenes. Yes, okay. Right, I'm happy that I had to have this right. So... Um, I don't know if you've heard about this, um, from I review too. If you heard about the featherless biped, that, that is my go-to. <laughs> do, you, do you want to? Do you want to tell it? Because I told the earlier story. Uh, yeah. So um, I, I don't remember all the details. So you go for it. Um. <laughs> uh, okay. So basically, Plato, who was a student of Socrates, um, I, I am fifty-fifty on Plato. I'm not his biggest fan. Not not don't really hate him. Um, mainly because Plato's Allegory of the Cave is really Socrates' Allegory of the Cave, and Plato just published it. Um, but, you know, stealing your mentor's work is not bad. <laughs> um, so, Plato came out and was like, a human being is a featherless biped. So Diogenes comes along and goes, he plucks, like, straight up plucks a chicken goes up to the steps of Plato's school and goes, there is your human, which forced Plato to then um, change the definition of um, a, a, of a human as a featherless biped uh, without, I think it was without claws? I might be wrong on that, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's just an amazing, like, the, George, like I say, George Nees was absolutely um, insane. Um, he, he was very commonly, um, he, he, obviously he lived in a barrel, um, which he would take everywhere with him, um, which didn't have the best, uh, toilet or restroom, uh, facilities, um, translating, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, so he would quite commonly, if he was upset with you, would open the little porthole and just wee on your shoes. Um, and if he was really upset with you, he would use projectiles, which I'll leave to you. <laughs> use projectiles. That is a very gentle way to say that. Yeah, uh, I think uh, my, yeah. my favorite is uh, the story of uh, when Antisthenes, his mentor, tried to, um, like, and I had to look it up to make sure I got all the names right, but I got was just getting really sick of him because he was basically just hounding him constantly. He would sleep outside of... Antisthenes' house just to bug him, um, to make like to, to beg him to take him on as a student. Yeah. Um, and at one point, uh, Antisthenes starts beating him with a stick because he's being so annoying, and Diogenes goes, strike for you will find no wood hard enough to keep me away from you so long as you. I think you've something to teach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just... That's awesome. That's great. That, 
beat me as much as you want, I will learn to read. Like, <laughs> and you're going to be the one to teach me. Quickly, if I can say, we're very briefly into something Socrates did. When they tried to rescue him from prison, they actually left him because he just kept asking them why he was trying, why they were trying to free him. <laughs> <laughs> like Socrates was just there's some yeah he did some shady shop but um we ignore that uh, uh, but yeah he was just I love Greek ancient Greek philosophers they were just insane yeah so, so many great characters and uh, yeah I, I do I remember I uh, like the, with the whole Alexandra was a woman was actually a woman thing and the argument <laughs> that like you know <laughs> oh god the whole Mom thing Lenny was just follow, Mom Lenny will follows me. I don't know why. Uh, no. I don't know when that happened, but she follows me. She and unblocked she me. Point. Maybe she's turning a new leaf. Well, Maybe she has she stopped. She has, for the most part, stopped with the Rome nonsense. So good for her. Uh, let's see. Um, Iz goes, you expect me to have questions? Ha, I give you money and gifts and be your friends in return. Can you tell Archie I love him? Yes. Archie. Come here, buddy. He's sleeping mm. under here. Oh, oh yeah, he's oh, awake. Yeah, but yeah, because I called him. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Uh, also, real quick, what's the... Um, Come here. What's the roast of Mattis on oh, Saturday? Oh, this is something that we planned uh, last night. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a roast of me. By who? Uh, the Discord. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna live stream it. It's gonna be a roast. Oh, good lord, that's dangerous. I, I would do that on Twitch. You're you're welcome to probably yeah. You're welcome to come uh, and be in studio and it's... roast me or be roasted. Oh boy. Um, when is this? What time on Saturday? Probably 7 p.m. on Saturday. Okay. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see, this, behold this a man, uh, mom says mm-hmm. got, my mom says got to hop on a call, but great podcast, aw, thanks mom, and Thank she you. said eat your veggies, uh, Smart. I don't, what's a veg, what's a vegetable? I think there's some, like, weird, like, green thing. Oh, okay, I don't like, I don't, I, I mean, don't, green is my favorite color, green. but I don't, I don't think it tastes eat good. green. <laughs> Brighton doesn't eat blue. <laughs> Hammond for five dollars says, "What for do you call you a reference. wizard that loves pastries? A pyromancer." I love that. I love puns. I love yeah. I, I, puns. I, are so I did a pun earlier. I did a pun video on on TikTok earlier, which I, I, I can repeat, but people will hate me. Um, Fair I do. I do have to ask since you're here and since you were here last night. Um, I, I need to ask your opinion. Uh, doors or wheels? Wheels. Okay. I, I made that clear in the chat. I, I just wanted to make sure. I just wanted to make sure. In case people weren't here last night. I just thought of another variable for that equation. What? Roller skates. No one I've seen has mentioned roller skates yet. Well, you know, we, uh, you know what I pointed out to Cat? Cat is team doors. Um, I pointed out that in this room, there are, if you count anything with hinges mm-hmm. as a door and you count windows as doors, this room has about 11 doors. Mm-hmm. However, uh, Each of these guitar amps has about eight wheels on it. Mm -hmm. Each of these chairs has five wheels, so ten wheels. Each of our microphones has five wheels. Yep. Tell me there are more doors. And I was like, this room is a microcosm of the world. And she was like, that's not, this is not a representative sample. And I was like, is it not, though? There was also an interesting one about uh, blades of grass versus hair uh, in the world. And I did the math. Um, there are more hairs on, I can't remember what it was. It was like, I think it's, there are more hairs on a single human body. Oh no, sorry. No, 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 no. That was it. There are more hairs on the collective human bodies, like just top of heads hair than there are blades of grass in the world, period. That's not including body hair. That's not including any other animal with hair. So it is by far hair. But I just found, I found that interesting. I'm also amazed that that information, that data, is readily available in a very fast Google search. <laughs> like, you have to do some math, but it's not that hard. Oh, you said it's really great. Say, cool. that, like, the, the absolutely, like, defining, like, like ends the debate on worlds versus doors immediately is the fact that every door must have a hinge, therefore, and every hinge is technically a very tiny wheel. I agree with you. So if you have like, if you have like one long, one long hinge, each door has to have a minimum of two wheels, mm-hmm. right? So that means that for every door in existence, there is double the amount of wheels, even if you don't include every other wheel that isn't attached to a door. That's true. Yeah, I mean that that ends it. It's over. Yeah. Huh. Exactly. <laughs> Doors people, BTFO. <laughs> uh, 
Is said for five dollars. Thank you, Is. Uh, get both Aiden's there, of course. We won't be holding back. Yeah, that that's as be expected. Also, uh, Taylor, you, accurate statement, but mildly concerning in an out of context scenario. Uh, says, did you know that you have an above average number of legs for a human? And they're right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my brain, my brain went somewhere else with that. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that's where mine but went first. Ryan, but then, you saucy okay, man. But yes. <laughs> the then, title uh, of this episode is simp for Alexander." That's like, fair. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Valid. Well, afterwards, I'm gonna rename it to "Why You Should Simp for Alexander." Oh. Smart plan. Um, yeah, because I, we had to find out if the video was going to tell us that we should, but and we have found out clearly we have discovered has. that you should. I, I I must admit that I, I tell you what I would love to come on if you can find someone who's really obsessed with Napoleon because my like my other main thing oh, on TikTok is just I know some Napoleon. people. I, my other main thing on TikTok is just annoying Napoleon fans. I don't even really have like that much mistake, but Napoleon fans get really upset when I say Alexander was better. Was. I would love to see that argument. We should start hosting debates. That'd be fun. I would love. I would love as long as it's like a fun debate and it's not yeah. gonna like get like, everyone involved, cancelled. Like I like, <laughs> like, like I would. I would be up for that. Like Napoleon. Anyone who's on Cromwell's side, like there are some serious Cromwell. Fan the Cromwell fan base hates me because I did an entire hit piece on him on YouTube. <laughs> um, I'm. I, I find well, it I'm, very very odd that there is a Cromwell fan base. There's a fan base for everything on the internet. Let's be real. Well, there's a staunch. Uh, I mean, I had to like in my Cromwell video on, on YouTube. I did openly admit that he did help the Jewish communities in England, like, and that was pretty much the only nice thing I said. Because I, I have to commit it from a, I, I openly said the video, look, I hate Cromwell, I'm gonna be biased, um, like, enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, I, I, I was, I was as unbiased as I could be, but I will admit, it's like, I, I recently did videos on Catherine the Great, and I discovered that I don't actually like her, um, my opinion on her changed greatly, but my opinion on Cromwell didn't change. The more I researched him, in fact, the more I hated him. Um, you know, there is very, very, I've been, I've had threats from people for making bad stuff about Cromwell. People get very... Technical. Cromwell was an objectively bad person, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's people that argue that the stuff he did was normal for the time period. And that I'm like, doesn't make it okay. Mm. Yeah. That's like, oh, no, no Just because just really it was anything. normal to oppress the Irish for a solid thousand years doesn't mean you should <laughs> do it. <laughs> Valid. Being a very heavily okay. Irish person, I, valid. I can, therefore I should, is not a, a path to <laughs> good decision-making. No, never. Also, never. Uh, Captain Alien says, wheels, a regular semi and trailer has 18 wheels. If you have double or triple, that's 30 wheels, I believe, for three trailers. Heavy hauling, wide loads has ungodly amount of wheels. That's true. Yeah. Boats. Do boats have wheels? Containers. What about Containers. The containers for that are used for shipping and container ships. That's a lot of doors. Yeah, but each of those doors has a hinge, therefore... Yeah. I don't know if I'm it's counting hinges. I'm on, I'm, a, I'm on team wheels. wheels. I'm on team wheels, and a wheel is a pretty defined shape. Like, I don't... I, I'm in, in my... Rec in my idea, I'm not going to count hinges. Those are just r cylindrical rods, and that's not a wheel. You're a cylindrical rod. In a way, right, yes. But what about, but if you think about it, right, so they're, they're very cylindrical, yes, but what about the, the steam rollers that put roads down? You know, they're massive front bit. That's technically a wheel. Yeah, that I'm not considering that a wheel. That's a wheel, and that's what's in a hinge. It's a wheel. Mm -hmm. It's a wheel. The same thing that's in a hinge. No, the if hinge, about, the, the hinge is, is the, the axle. <clears throat> the hinge is the axle. It, hinge to door hinge, like, apparatus, is axle to car essentially like you wouldn't consider a drive shaft to be a wheel you wouldn't consider a log to be a wheel you wouldn't download a wheel <laughs> you wouldn't download a car would you yeah uh, i'm uh i'm gonna i'm gonna 
I, I'm gonna agree to disagree with you on the on the hinge bit. All right, but, fine. But we agree there are more wheels. Yes. Oh, okay, I'm still on team okay. wheels, All but right. I, I like thinking of so, more variables that really yeah. just kind of like throw a wrench in the whole thing. Hammond for two dollars says Napoleon fanboys ask the historical Total War people. That's true. That is a good place another, to find Napoleon okay. fanboys. Another person's go after because I will argue that he was completely useless, and the only reason we actually think about him is because Peter the Third pulled the troops, the Russian troops out of Prussia um, is Frederick the Great. Totally useless and overrated. And I will stand by that statement. We might have to do a show where you just explain that because that is an opinion I don't usually hear. But Napoleonic <laughs> history is not what, one of my strong suits. Um, Fred, Fred, Frederick the Great has some very hardcore fanboys and I've literally only said that to annoy them. But, um... okay. right. uh, Douglas Eyes for five dollars, thank you, says first time catching the show live, watching while I fold towels at work, love the show. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah, the only reason I would like the Napoleonic era is purely because of uh, Master and Commander and the other like naval warfare stories that come from that. So I'm, I'm big in that. I, I, I... I know a couple of really good Nelson stories. Oh, um, oh yay. So, so, uh, surprisingly, the, the British kid knows Nelson stories. <laughs> <laughs> There's no shame in it. He's worth knowing about. Yeah. What are your thoughts on John Paul Jones? Do you know what? I don't know who that is. Oh. I Lord. bet they don't teach them. We, how do we, how do <laughs> I we, bet they, no, don't, they don't teach them. they definitely don't teach them. They definitely don't teach them. But they don't even teach them here. Yeah, we learned about him. No, we didn't. He, he was. He, we, we should do a history hut on JPJ. I told you we could do that months ago. Why haven't we? You didn't do it. Oh, you wanted me to yeah, do the video? Yeah, I wanted you to do the video. Oh, I can do the video then. Okay, the next time we film, you do the video. Sounds good. I'll do that. Go ahead. Because you said you wanted to talk about um, Owen, Owen Glenn's video. I actually looked him up because the only real stuff I know about him is off of Horrible Histories and the one song they did. And the only thing I really knew was that he was meant to come back if England ever threatened Wales again. I thought, I mean, I know a lot about what English and Welsh histories, and given the last couple of hundred years especially, he should have probably come back a couple which, of times. Which figure is this? Um, uh, Owen, Owen Glendweir. Oh, I've never heard of that guy. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did my research papers on him in college. He's... Yeah, no, he's the same as King Arthur. They said that uh, he was going yeah. to come back whenever the Welsh people were facing oppression by the English. Um, I don't know, maybe he was like, next time the Welsh people win their independence and face oppression again. Because I, I think he had too much faith, faith in the Welsh to uh, actually try and resist. That's fair. Also, in his defense, the Welsh haven't tried to resist. Also, Captain That's Alien, uh, for your information, shipping containers have four doors, not two. And I respect the fact that you're mentioning that you've hauled a lot of wheels in semis. But, and being on the side of more wheels than doors... Have you ever seen how many containers are fitted onto a container ship? It's a lot. Still on the side of wheels, though. Anyway. All right. Uh, Iz says, for $5, thank you, Iz, I can, therefore I should, is my life motto. Why do you think I'm such a hot mess? That's valid. Well. At least you're self-aware, Iz. It's, that's technically Alexander's motto as well. It's True. Fair. Yeah, I, I know. I, I should. I know too many people who live by that motto, and it's not. It's, uh, it's kind of an inversion of the the Veni Vidi Vici. The it's instead of I came, I saw, I conquered. It's I saw, I came, I conquered. I guess. Yeah. In certain circles, yes. Um. What time is it? It is eight twenty-four. We have six All minutes right. until so, we're. Yeah, we have we have six minutes. If you have burning questions, now is the time. Uh, Kira Ord says this show has quickly become my favorite and looking forward to every episode. Oh, well, thank you, Kira. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, and she even got her mom to look into the show because she got her degree in history. We love that. Love to see it. We love to see it. Um, while we got a moment here, uh, in a little bit of a pause, Ryan, do you want to, you want to, like, you know, pitch yourself? You want to give us your, your socials? And we have your, we have your at in the description, but I just want to give you a shot to, you know, explain who you are. Sure. Um, so obviously, uh, I started off on TikTok, and my TikTok is History Daddy. Um, just doing comedy sketch. I started off doing what everyone does on TikTok, just random stuff, and then I did my uh, first Alexander sketch. It went viral, um, and now I focus. I don't even really use the audio anymore. I focus pretty much very short sketches um, on on history on TikTok, and they're very they're very broad. They're not very deeply historical. And if you want a more historical outlook, um, I do um, sort of twenty minute apart videos on youtube which are still comedy based it's still focus on comedy 
Um, but because it's not TikTok, I can get away with a lot more. So my comedy is it tends to be a lot more dark humor. So if you're more dark offensive humor, um, that's like go for it. Um, yeah, that I, I tend to focus more on like long form informative content on YouTube with comedy mixed in. Mm -hmm. um, I then have I you know regular stuff Twitter. Um, uh, any any social I can get my hands on. Um, I, I, I recently joined Odyssey because that that seemed like nothing coming on. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much. Right. Is it History Daddy um, on all of them? Yes, History Daddy on on, on everything. All right. Um, no. Yeah. But, but I do have one quick question to ask. Sure. Um, who do you think King Arthur is? Hmm. Who do you think King Arthur? Who do you think King Arthur was in in history? The real person? Because I have a theory. That I think you'll disagree about with. about a specific individual. I I believe so. The actual story of how the Saxons came over, it from what I've read, isn't like there's a lot of legend mixed in with it mm -hmm. to the point where we're not like a hundred percent sure. Um, well, they came so, over twice. Like, yes, yes. Um, but the Sax the main idea is like that that we've been the Saxons have been working as as um, mercenaries for the Romans, and we're like. The Romans are gone now, this seems fun, but the actual, like, negotiations amongst the Celtic kingdoms, which we know horrendously little about, which agitates me, that gap, mm -hmm. where the, 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 the Celtic kingdoms would be so interesting, because I want to know about that dynamic of moving back to pagan roots while looking yeah. at Christianity and Roman culture. It's a very interesting time period, and no one wrote it down, um, except for the Romans, who are at the currently running yeah. away. And Gildas. Um, and Bede. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but they were giving sermons, so... so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um... So, I, I think that Arthur... One, because I actually read... I have a Celtic Myth and Legends book um, written by Peter Berifidelis in the back where Arthur is actually the villain and he's described as a Saxon in one of the stories. Um, and I think that he may have been um, one, like, either a Saxon that switched sides in one of the, the, the one of the various wars or an amalgamation of various Celtic lords that led an alliance because that is the only way and that he was sort of like amalgamated. I think he was probably multiple people. He definitely did exist, but he was also definitely no one near it as strong as this, a lot of the stories suggest. And I also think that he like may have been just straight up killed like Sparker style on the battlefield. Yeah, I, uh, I, I definitely, I, the idea that he was a Saxon is odd to me, but um, mm -hmm. the one that I, I do it's see, I do see That's the amalgamation right. argument, but I don't, I don't think he was an amalgamation, but I do think it was a title. I think Arthur is a title. That is, and that is my opinion because of the Welsh language, um, the fact that if you take uh, certain Welsh words uh, and put them together a hundred few hundred years later you could get something like arthur uh for example uh if it was ardri which would be high king um or if you did arth uh arth dur arth dur i think there, there's one in which it becomes uh basically like great bear so great bear and high king are the two name are the two titles that i think you could get out of it uh and then especially with the addition of pendragon which could mean, which could be Pendrech, which could be uh, High King Great Dragon, which, in my opinion, knowing Welsh folklore about dragons, uh, sounds very possible. But yeah, I, I don't know if I could name a specific historical figure, yeah. but uh, Ambrosius Aurelianus is the one that I was taught is most likely Arthur. Uh, but looking at it, I think the, the story about it, the stories about it, first of all, um, if you read like Nennius, who obviously was writing a, a little bit later, uh, he says that Arthur, though there were many more noble than he, was elected 12 times to lead the Britons. So it sounds to me like it was one specific person, probably a lesser nobleman who had shown some sort of strategic and tactical prowess, but we've lost that person's name over time. I've I've heard that he was a Roman multiple times. It's yeah. one of the like after uh, after him being because obviously, like um like the idea of like um the, the Welsh legends what wasn't ex wasn't itself because obviously Welsh, I make like um originally comes from the Saxon word Waelas which means mm -hmm. foreigner which was like, quite like it's kind of ironic like, yeah 
kind of ironic. Um, I mean, they did that on purpose, 100% yeah. that was they, done they, on purpose. Yeah, they called themselves the comedy. Yeah. Um, because, the, um, I mean, Germanic people at that point in time, obviously the Romans knew very well. There's a reason the Romans never managed to, to get into the Germanic tribes. Um, so the Germanic tribes were like very much like, if it's if it's ours, it's, it's ours, and if it's yours, it's ours. Mm. <laughs> Which the Scandinavians then ran with later on. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, I've lost, entirely lost my train of thought. But I, yeah, no, I think if he, if if I, I think if if he wasn't Celtic, he definitely wasn't Saxon. The only other reason I say that is because of the way he was co-opted by Saxons later on. Yeah, there was and a I, weird I feel like there absorbance. Has to be connected. Because Tintagel Castle was built because English kings, at this point, like England had been amalgamated, were obsessed with becoming King Arthur. In fact. The idea of ruling the entirety of the British Isles comes from English kings wanting to be Arthur because yeah. Arthur in legend ruled the entirety of the British Isles. Right. So a lot of people will often blame Arthur for the, the, the English urge, even though technically it wasn't until after the Anglo-Norman period started, mm. and which is my get-out clause. Um, <laughs> all the bad things that happened, um, I blame it on the Anglo Norman. Um, uh, it, it was just this idea of I'm I'm Arthur because Arthur is amazing, so I'm going to take it all. Um, I I don't think he could be Celtic because Celtic leaders that, that don't like if you look at Brennus, he was the last really successful Celtic um, king, and I don't think there would be a Celt. I, I'm, this may sound very bad, but I, I don't think there was a, in that time period any Celts left that were that tactically well minded to bring that legend to bear. So, so I that's, think it probably would have been Roman. That is the thing about um the uh, about the Arthur legend is that he's not first of all he's you know he's extraordinarily successful against the Saxons. Yes. Um Brennus was extraordinarily yes. successful against the Romans, which is why Brennus is special. And the Greeks. Yeah. And the Greeks. Yeah, so Brennus is special because he was going up against much much better disciplined armies. Um, yeah. But with Arthur specifically, uh, the idea that he was a member of the Romano-British like civil elite mm. comes out a lot because the Celts, the the Welsh at the time, were not using cap heavy cavalry. Um, that was a distinctly Roman mm. military tactic. The Saxons also weren't doing it. So, in all of the stories we get, the most contemporary stories we have of Arthur, he's leading cavalry charges, which leads people to believe that he's probably a member of the Romano-British culture, which means that he could have been fully Latin, but it's also entirely possible, in fact, it would be probable, given the time period, that he was probably of both Celtic and Latin stock. That makes more sense, actually. <laughs> actually, yeah, that makes most sense. Yeah, so he was probably a you know a, a low-ranking um, you know military or uh, civil leader who was then elected. Uh, it doesn't seem like he was a traditional um, mm. you know hereditary high king, which is kind of the way he's painted. Um, the for example the the story that Disney tells, you know the the classic uh, sword in the stone story, which I can't remember exactly when that part emerges, but the idea of Arthur not being right. Yeah, that's what I thought. The idea of Arthur not being noble at birth, or being noble at birth but hidden away to not be, so people didn't know, that one seems to actually make it all the way through all of the other revisions, you know, because originally it's Arthur wins 12 battles and the final one at Mons Baden, he routes the Saxons so hard that they retreat over the sea and don't come back for 100 years. Um, you know, that's Arthur's great triumph in Nennius's uh, account of events. But if you go and you look at uh, the, the later, you know, Le Mort d'Arthur, uh, he's, he's conquered the whole world. He's gotten to China. <laughs> like, um, yeah. So mm. it, it's a fascinating case study in how, uh, you know, folk heroes emerge and evolve over time. But it's, it seems very exactly. unlikely to me that, you know, he was anything more than a prince. In later revisions, there's actually hints that parts of Alexander's story was added in. I would 100% believe that. Like any 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 revision that was happened after like the 1100s was almost always from the French, and the French added in stuff like the Round Table. Yeah. The um the lady, I think the Lady of the Lake might have actually been from an earlier story, but almost completely different in how it goes down. 
Um, the Saxon revisions were mostly just like, oh yeah, no, Arthur will come back and defend um, defend the Britons, and then the Saxons were like, well, we, I suppose we're technically Britons. No, you're not. You're just yeah. <laughs> Are we building the a castle and hoping. Just as yeah. a, but I know we're at time, but I just I want to get one last thing in. Okay, one last one thing. I've got two more. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was it? It's gone. It's gone. What was I gonna say? <laughs> Shit. Um, oh yeah. Well, do you, do you know when the uh, the earliest mention of Arthur in literature is? Because no. this is fascinating. It is less than a century after his death. Everyone thinks that Arthur is not mentioned for hundreds of years. That he's this folk hero that emerges around the time of Nennius, who's writing in the 9th century. But Arthur's name is mentioned um, in a very, like, just passing way in uh, Igadothan, which is the story of, we believe it's the Battle of Catraeth, which is the Anglo-Saxons came over, and I, re I believe it's Bebenburg, actually, that this all takes place outside of, which ties into the Last Kingdom, if anybody's been watching. Um, but the Anglo-Saxons come over... And the king of uh, Gadothan reaches out to all the other Celtic kings and says, hey, we got this, these, these Saxons are back, they landed. You know, because Arthur had driven them out at the beginning of the century. We get to 600 AD and the king of Regeth is, hey, we need help. I think it's Urien of Regeth, if I remember correctly. It says, we need help. Uh, everybody's got to come together and help us push out the Saxon threat. And so they gather, I think it's 300 soldiers? It's either 150 or 300, but I think it's 300 um, soldiers to go, yeah. to go and uh, they, they feast for like a year at, at the palace in Godothan, and then they all march south. And the story itself, for the most part, is just a list of names, deeds, and how they died <laughs> um, of all of these great Welsh heroes who came to the battle, but all of them died. And it's written by Anirin, who is claiming to be the sole, survival of the sole survivor of the battle. Uh, Anirin may have been a brother of Gildas, but that also may just be a later connection between the two to try and give them each credibility. But Anirin writes Igadothan and has this one line where he's talking about a guy named Gurdarthur. Uh, not saying that that's Arthur, but he says, Gurdarthur, who was not as great as Arthur, da 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 da. <laughs> so it's literally name, he's not as cool as Arthur, and then his deeds. So it's clear that Arthur in 600 AD was a figure that uh, poets, at the very least, were familiar with. So he must have, there must have been an Arthur. He must have been called Arthur by then. The question is, who was he? Was that his name or was it a title? But he, he is mentioned in 600 AD. Um, so that, that, I think, is fascinating. But that's, that is the one reason that I am so hardline that Arthur was a real person even if he was in some way an amalgamation. But I want to get to these I, last two I, super chats so that we can... Uh, yeah, sure, sure. So we can let you go to bed. Jeez, dude. Um, I'm not so, going to go to bed for another couple of hours. Yeah, I'm going to So, <laughs> Sequitur Tenebris says, I know it's unrelated to tonight's stream, but can we get a video on the Wyoming zombie outbreak from 1848? Did you write that down? I did write that down. Nice. Yes, you will. Um, Hammond for $5 said, here's a question. Why is England called England? It's the Angles that came over, not the Angles. We should be speaking English, not sa not English. I, uh, I, I, I can't explain it in a brief sentence. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's it's really at that point kind of an etymology issue in the way linguistics works. Um, the the term Alfred came up with was Angloland, um, possibly because Anglia was already a place. Mm. and he wouldn't want it to get confused so Angloland became England because let's be realistic Angloland sounds stupid um, but he was hardline ride or die Angloland his entire life uh, yeah. and if you watch The Last Kingdom or Vikings uh, he says England he would never have called it England nobody from yeah. that time period would ever have called it England <laughs> that bugs me he's like I just have one dream a united England I'm like who are you Teddy Roosevelt like, yeah exactly <laughs> But, uh, all right, well, um, the ant people can also go on the list. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, well, I think that takes us to about the end of the show. We got to get ready for that, uh, that movie night. Yes. Um, you have plugged yourself, so we don't need to do yeah. that. Um, but yeah, is there any, do you have any final thoughts you would like to say before we end the show? 
Um, no, obviously, you know, I've got plenty of other historical characters I'd like to talk. I'd love to talk about Ethel Fled, Lady of Mercia. So if you ever want me to come back on, I'll... Oh, we can absolutely have an entire show dedicated to the, the Last Kingdom. <laughs> Yeah, I, would... I need to catch up with last season, but um, definitely the real Ethel Fled is a lot more um, badass than yeah. the show. Yeah, but I would I would absolutely do a show about that, do an episode. So let's definitely do that. Um, and yes, Taylor, I will try and get the blue hair done this week. Oh, oh, I want to see that. I'm very excited for this. <sighs> Kill me. All right, Teddy Roosevelt is king of England. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, it's right. A sketch of BBC. There's actually, there's actually a, a BBC sketch about um, a, 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 an American guy who comes over and he's taking DNA tests and it turns out he's related to a Welsh prince. And it's like, it's just really funny because they're talking to each other in, in, in Cymru, I think that's the, the language. And um, I probably said that wrong. Um, and they're, they're talking to each other and they're like, he's an idiot. And it's just like this whole argument where this is an American guy going, no, I am the Prince of Wales. Where's my throne? And it's funny. I definitely recommend it. <laughs> I'll have to take a look. All right. Um, really quickly, someone wants to wants you to spell the thing that you said oh, last. Oh, about... Uh It is Y space G O D D I N. Gnodin. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, I Welsh. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you're going to be able to find it. Just be prepared. It is not written in modern English. It is written in modern English, like in terms of the words. But it it is very much not written the way modern English poets and authors write. It mm. is the that archaic early medieval, um, you know, bardic poetry that is meant to be recited at various uh, events. So um, that that will just about do it for the night, Ryan. Thank you so much for your time. Thank uh, you for having me. Yeah, and I uh, I think talking about the the Viking invasion of England would be a fun episode too. So we'll definitely make a make a point of doing that. But uh, we got to hop off. So thank you, everyone who tuned in. And thank you to everyone who tuned in afterwards to watch the replay. Uh, I'm Aiden Mattis. I'm Aiden Thornberry. I'm Ron Day. And this has been the Lore Lodge. Thank you all for coming. See you later.